Welcome to Deeply Disturbing Things, the podcast. I'm Macy. And I'm Naomi. And we're two professional counselors who like to talk about deeply disturbing things. And we believe laughter is the best medicine. Dive dive in. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. I'm sorry you don't like your beverage. It's not not bad. It's It's a canned Moscow mule. I mean, it smells like it. (laughs) It smells like a mule (laughs) from Moscow. That's good. I'm drinking some kind of mead thing. Yeah, yeah. So my final closing the door chapter for now on Britney Spears is I saw that her dad has on Tuesday has now like submitted to end his conservatorship. Yeah. At first, I think he wanted a big payout. Yeah. It, like a he couple was, like, mil holding, or something. Holding on and now he's like things have changed. I think he's bowing months. to public pressure is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. maybe that's something the Free Britney movement accomplished was mm-hmm. by, you know, putting the spotlight on it and mm-hmm. making sure some positive changes happen. Some accountability. Yeah. So you noticed. Uh, I gave you like creepy witch shoes on the table. Not witch shoes. I don't like them. Do they, they are so close to me? Well, I'm trying to put them on the camera. Oh, okay. They are um, Victorian boots. And Ooh, I like, yeah, you can, the heels are very Victorian. Don't touch them, though, they'll make your hands all black. I'm not going to So touch they're them. burned, burned oh. Victorian boots. Intentionally burned? Well, this house was on fire a long time ago. Really? And so these were burned in the fire, and when we first moved in, we found them in a wall. In the wall? Yeah. Isn't That's that, creepy. Isn't that neat? That is neat. We also found a, a creepy photo of, like, some kids. You have a really creepy house. It's not creepy. It's you full just, of love and laughter. Burnt Victorian boots out of your wall. <laughs> I know. She probably died in them. She was probably shoved in the wall with those boots and burnt to death. I have not found any dead bodies in the basement. Because they burned. We were waiting because we dug up the basement recently. Yeah. No dead bodies. Interesting. Not even a lot of interesting artifacts. That's some good cleanup. So what other check-ins do you have? Well, I went to Sandpoint, Idaho for the weekend. I saw your spider-ness on Facebook. That's gross. Yes. So overshadowing what would have been a lovely weekend getaway was the fact that apparently it's Mm -hmm. spider season in Sandpoint, Idaho, which I'd never heard of. I didn't know there was a, a season of the spiders. I was in Sandpoint this weekend as well, and I saw no spiders. (laughs) (laughs) They are nocturnal spiders. And you were out at night, I saw. So, like, by day, because I would look, and they were all, like, hiding from the sun. And then at night, they all come out, thousands, millions, billions of them, and were super active. Mm. And, yeah, all the locals were like, it's spider season. No. And they were fine with it. And I was not fine with it. Nobody should be fine with it, No. They were everywhere. Oh, you know how I showed you the the big giant spiders in Oklahoma that my dad is dealing with? Those yeah. really big things? So, and I think I told you there was like now an egg sac. No, thanks. Okay. So now there are six large full grown spiders in that same area. And he's counted, um, I think three or four more egg sacs have now developed. Ooh. I know it's like too many. Those things are like the size of his hand. No, thanks. Yeah, no. I started getting really disturbed by the spiders. I could tell. They were starting to get to me be, mm-hmm. in, because they were so everywhere. And yeah, I wanted obviously. to make sure there wasn't 10 of them above my head. Or like get the babies in your hair. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm itchy. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so that's my check-in. Cool. Here's to spider season. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'm not drinking it. There were cat spiders, I learned. What are th- what are cat spiders? Do they have ears? No, that's the like name cats? of those spiders that were all over. They were all the same kind of spider. They're Ugh. called cat spiders. And I guess they're, because they're quick. They eat a lot of bugs, so they're okay. helpful for the world and they don't harm humans. And they were mostly outside. So it's like mostly. cats eating mice. So that was like okay, but they were like everywhere. Everywhere. I have to admit I fold I folded? 
And on Amazon, I purchased a cat house for my outdoor stray cats. (laughs) (laughs) They now have a kitty condo. That means they're no longer stray cats. They are your cats. No, they're outdoor cats. It does not say which cats belong there. I do not have a mailbox. (laughs) But they can go in there when it gets cold. I'm worried about once it gets cold. I'm fairly emotionally attached to the kittens. So you've started a cat shelter is what you're saying. (sighs) Just say it. Just own it. No. No, because then once one gets hit by a car, then it's my fault. (laughs) Macy's home for homeless cats. I won't name any of them, (laughs) but I cuddle with them. Okay. uh, Oh, they're your cats. No, they're not. One of them tries to desperately run in the house anytime I open the door. It's so sad because I have to put it back outside. Like, sorry, you don't get to be in with the other cats. I predict that when cold weather (laughs) comes, you will let those kittens inside. Mm, They'll be bigger like cats then. So we'll see. (laughs) They're as cute. It's not as alluring when they're cats. Yeah, no. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So I have a part two to last week's topic. I I talked about Ed Gain. Um, So. I'm not going to dive into all the stuff, but I'll highlight a couple things just to tie some pieces together. But really, like I did the typical search and it was hard to find some missing pieces. And I did find a I'm I'm going to have to thank Department of Psychology at Radford University <laughs> for having their students do this project that I was able to find some additional information on. So They're thank so you. Rad. You're so rad. So that's where I've gathered this additional info. So I'm proud of you for citing your sources. Yes. So today I am just going to go through and fill in the gaps and then we can talk about if that answered our questions or if it raised more questions that we had left over from last week's topic with Ed Gain. Okay. Okay. Did you remember any of the questions that you had? I was interested in, well, the insanity plea, Mm -hmm. just what was behind that because i know it's it can be hard to get that proven that somebody really was didn't know what they were doing didn't mm-hmm. know right from wrong and all that yeah so i was interested in that and just more of like the psychology like the background like with the mom maybe the brother like what was stuff. going on I've, I've got some stuff that i think adds it adds more okay it adds more okay so first thing that I found out that I didn't know before was he also had a growth on his left eyelid that had him have kind of a lazy eye. Oh. And and he had um some sort of like issue with his tongue that also created a bit of a lisp. So there's some definite remember when we were talking about like the social not piece? fitting in socially. Yes. Okay. So like there's some of that. So, so he probably got picked on. I mean yeah, I'm mean. sure. I'm sure. I found out more about dad too. George. So George was an abusive alcoholic. Okay. He worked periodically as a carpenter, tanner, like leather tanning. Oh, you know all about that. <laughs> as as a farmer, I do. I don't think I've like really farmed anything. Okay. Um, and Augusta, the mom, as we know, was frantically religious. Um, that held true. Augusta supported the family through a grocery business, which I didn't know that before. She despised her husband, George. Mm. She felt he was worthless and gave him no part in raising the two boys. Oh, George. Ed witnessed his parents slaughter of a hog in the shed behind the family store. Ed experienced an ejaculation upon viewing Mm. this. No, Ed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was in 1913. So was that, as far as we know, like the first that was kind what, of red flag? That, um, let me see here. That was when he was around seven years old was when that happened. Wow. I didn't yeah. even know those right. things happened at that age. Right. So um, at age eight, the Gaines moved to Plainfield, Wisconsin to a 195-acre farm the one that um, I told you about. Uh, it was because Augusta wanted to move away from the immortality of the city and the sinners that inhabited it. The closest neighbor- neighbors were like a mile away. So again, kind of furthering that. That isolation. Mm-hmm. Ed was shunned, so about eight years old, uh, isolated at school because of his lazy eye and his extreme shyness. 
He also had that lesion on his tongue that caused him to speak oddly. Well, he probably wouldn't be so shy if people were so mean. <laughs> right? And Augusta severely punished Ed when he did attempt to make friends. Augusta verbally abused both boys, believing they were destined to become failures like their father. Oh. Yeah. That was like this key piece because before we didn't know if it was like this mutual loving, but sounds like she like really projected her hatred for the father onto the kids. Ed would come home crying um, from kids making fun of him and his alcoholic father would repeatedly beat him in the head uh, and it was Mm. reported till his ears started ringing oh my gosh so he probably had tbi tbi yeah which can lead to all kinds (laughs) of cognitive and emotional changes Mm -hmm. age 12 ed was caught by his mother masturbating in the bathtub she grabbed his genitals and called them the curse of man. <gasps> Our topics are linked. Oh my gosh. Forever. <laughs> don't try to. I don't know how to respond to that. Shake my link off. Um, <laughs> I saw that. You're like. <laughs> uh, well, it's like you touched me like right as I was talking about genitals being grabbed in the tub. So <laughs> That's your shoulder. It was just like a. Not your genital. <laughs> My body wasn't okay with it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that that that's was okay. a non-consensual that's okay. so shoulder grab? At age 14, Ed graduated the eighth grade and then dropped out of school. I mean, but nothing like your mom grabbing your junk. No, you, like uh, that's intense. Like, and in the moment, he's and imagine like 12, aroused at 12 that years old. That twists shit in a, someone's mind. Yeah, I mean, and you're 12. That could be a pretty natural exploration in the tub privately. And you've already had the pig incident. Yeah, which so this just layers onto Mm -hmm, that. mm -hmm. So she had her sons promise to always remain virgins at the age of 21. Always remain virgins. Why? Because Because uh, women dirty. Well, she had this idea that women were evil, basically that that they were harlots and or was it because she wanted to keep them close to her and if they didn't experience that they wouldn't like be lured away from her controls maybe maybe Hmm. so george ed's father became a helpless this is their words not mine invalid and was completely dependent on his family um who feared and hated him george was no help on the farm and he drank away much of their money George ended up so this right around that time um 31 years old. George died of pneumonia um with fluid in his lungs at age 66. Augusta attributed his death to his weakness and referred to him going to hell. Wow. Yeah. So Ed and Henry uh 39 years old his um, older brother Henry began to take on odd jobs and Ed was often employed as a babysitter I had mentioned that before. He loved the company of children because they were easier for him to relate to. Both Ed and Henry were considered trustworthy and reliable by the townspeople. Hmm. So at age 36, in this part I couldn't find anywhere else, um, Ed was actually eligible for the draft. And he had traveled to Milwaukee for a physical exam. So that's like the farthest he'd ever left home. At age 76? 36. Oh, 36. 76. I thought you said that. I was like... Oh, that's old. no 36. The but draft. he was rejected because of the growth on his eyelid. Well, I'm sure it, they'd take Im- him now. Impaired his vision. So that's the farthest he would ever leave home. Then at 38, Henry, not sharing Ed's worship of their mother, began to openly criticize her. Henry was worried about what he perceived to be Ed's unhealthy attachment. This criticism shocked and mortified Ed. At age 38, same time frame, Henry died a sudden death under mysterious circumstances at the age of 43, while he and Ed were fighting a runaway fire on the marshland near their home. So no witnesses. No witnesses. Ed reported that he had been able to locate Henry, but then led police directly to where he was. So I don't know where he is. I don't know. Oh, here's his body. Like he knew where his body was, but he didn't know where he was. When he called in the report. Okay. And how, how did the brother die? All right. So, 
apparent cause of death was not consistent with the injuries. Oh, so, suspect. Yes. So Ed tried to say it was due to the fire. However, he had not been burned. And his head was badly bruised. Oh, not looking good for the story. No. The county coroner actually listed Henry's death as asphyxiation. The police dismissed the notion of foul play because they did not believe Ed was capable of killing someone. And that was that. That was it. That seems like poor investigative technique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Not looking at the evidence, just looking at your feelings. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're a good lad. <laughs> you know, the fire didn't touch him, but I you're believe you. You're real yeah. religious, and you never go out with the girls, so you couldn't have done anything wrong. He definitely suffocated to death in the fire. Mm-hmm. Okay. Possible. So Augusta became faint, the mom, um, and sickly not long after Henry died and had to be hospitalized. She had a stroke. Ah. Um, Augusta became worried um, about a year later about Ed reading books about head shrinking, grave robbing, and books on human anatomy. So this was the first time I found something where Augusta, his mom, was worried about the contents of what he was doing. What year is that? Uh, this is in 1945 when he was 39 years old. So where did he old. get those books? I mean, you don't get them at the local library. Do you mail order? That's a good question. I did not get that answer. <laughs> but <laughs> she was concerned, um, which last time we talked about this, we were like, well, maybe she was in on it or she enjoyed th parts of this. And this would start to make me lean towards maybe not as aware. Mm -hmm. Um. Augusta did die of complications that same year from a second stroke at age 67. Ed reacted by boarding up his mother's bedroom and sitting room to be preserved like a museum as they were when she was alive. So mm -hmm. here in a minute, I, I have pictures of the inside of the house. Oh, I want to see. The thing is, is I'm going to show you all the bits of the house. Um, and there aren't actually photos of his mom's room that's supposedly like immaculate. Like nothing touched, and you'll see the contrast is pretty stark. So he didn't keep her. So movies that kind of show that sort of thing, that's all fiction. Yeah. Yeah. Like keeping her in the house that's preserved like, somehow. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, so, we'll see. Okay. So <laughs> not at this juncture, things aren't happening weird. It gets weird though. So. I mean, it's been weird. <laughs> it's but. been weird. <laughs> You're right. So Ed's already like his appearance is getting worse. Neighbors are commenting on how bad he smelled. Mm -hmm. Ed continued to live on the farm and live off of odd jobs. He then boarded up all but two rooms in his house and they were never reopened again until his arrest. So you can't really, I mean, let's say he killed his brother. Yeah. You can't really then say, oh, his mom died and he snapped. Like there was already things happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's another common belief out there. Mm -hmm. It's like his mom like, died. He's and so attached. Like an emotional stressor. Yes. Mm, yeah, I don't I don't buy that. <laughs> um Okay. So at age 41, 18 months after his mom died, Ed, driven by intense loneliness and what he said to be strange visions. So here's where we were talking about when did hallucinations come into play? Oh yes. So it sounds like the visions came after his mom died, the hallucinations. Okay. Um, he began to visit the cemetery where his mother was buried. So it was that same cemetery. Mm -hmm. After several visits, he did begin to dig up corpses. The first body he dug up was that of his mother. <gasps> he, he did. did <laughs> dig her up. And then, do you want to know what he did next? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. He twisted her head off with his what? bare hands. Ed took the head and shrunk it similar to the way in his book. Oh. Right? So he's applying his research. Mm-hmm. So that's just this like, whoa, okay, I hadn't found that at all. Wow, I'd never heard of that. Mm-hmm. So wait, I mean, what was the intention, do you think? Uh, what was he going to do with that? Or what did he do with that? Do we know? Um, well, I believe that was found in the items in the house. Okay. Yeah. 
So at same same year, um, and I think that's let's see here. So that was in December that he did all that, and then in May, an eight year old Georgia Weckler disappeared. Oh, this is a little girl. Remember how we were like, what are all these little girl mm-hmm. things there? Um, she disappeared, leaving no suspects, and the only clue found was tire tracks of a Ford. And he had a Ford. So. And he was good with little kids. That's been established. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that trust. Mm-hmm. So now between ages 41 and 45, so this is from 1947 to 1951, he continued nocturnal visits as to as many as 40 cemeteries, frequently leaving without any offense on many of the occasions, but at least nine times he did dig up coffins of newly buried middle-aged women. He scouted them out in the obituaries. So we were (gasps) talking about that, right? right. (laughs) Yes. He would take what he wanted and then recover the, recover the graves. Take what he wanted. Off their bodies or Oh, because it wasn't the whole bodies. Not often. It was yeah. bits. Okay. Bits, yeah. I got to get enough nipples for that belt. Yeah. So besides masturbation, Ed denied ever having sex experiences in his life ever and stated that he had never had sex with cadavers because they, quote, smelled too bad. Oh, that's where you draw the line. Yeah. Um, his cravings and compulsions still fall under that category of necrophilia and an increase mm-hmm. in missing persons during that those years, um, that four year period, um, where they just it kept stumping police about these missing. Was it because he r- reported some arousal from the cadavers? Is that why they consider it necrophilia? Um yeah, because I, I believe he had some sort of, because he was masturbating, but he didn't have sex with them, but that still uh, falls yes. under the category. Okay. And they also had the collection of vulvas in a box. Maybe that was related. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so at 45 now, 1951, Ed visited a bar owned by Mary Hogan. We talked about her. She was a middle-aged woman that actually looked much like Ed's mother. See, we oh, didn't know no. that piece either. But she had a foul mouth and a reportable trashy history. Oh, my God. So she's like everything he hates and loves all in one. So much yes. emotion. They said that he was really transfixed by her because of the resemblance to his mom, but also by how just glaringly different they were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I kind of feel sorry for Ed. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like. It wasn't, There's definitely reasons. Yeah, like you yeah. can see how these seeds were planted and they grew up into this killer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Ed dug up Eleanor Adams, a 51-year-old, this is the same year, a 51-year-old woman who had been buried earlier that day. Um, and then another case, Victor Bunk, I believe is his last name, age 42, and a friend, Ray Burgess, disappeared with their car after spending several hours at a local bar in Plainfield. No trace of them was found or their car. Uh, while kidnapping men was kind of out of character for Ed Gain, police did believe that he had some role to play in it. So, mm. so more did people they, are going missing. But they didn't find any no, evidence No evidence. That. No evidence. Okay, so... Now we're in October uh, 1953. He's 47. Evelyn Hartley, age 15, remember we talked about 15 mm, years, yes. is abducted while babysitting for family friends. Her father found signs of a struggle, including her broken eyeglasses, bloodstains, and footprints. Her panties and bra were found two miles southeast of La Crosse and four miles further, a bloody pair of man's pants were found. Mm. Her body was never found. It's thought that Ed was responsible. It feels like it's very driven at this point. Yeah. Which does support that insanity plea. Mm -hmm. Because it's like one after the next Mm -hmm. after the next. Um, The day after uh, that murder, while working with Elmo Oh, sorry, I skipped a part. Just kidding. Okay, so that tavern owner, Mary Hogan, the one that looked like his mom, um, she disappeared from her establishment. Police suspected foul play because there was blood on the floor next to an empty bullet shell. Okay, police, obviously. And Ed later revealed that he had been hanging out with her, drinking a bit. 
He reported he pulled the blinds, put a 22 caliber gun to her forehead, and shot her. The day after the murder, while working um, with a man named Elmo, he admitted to killing her and said he had hung her up at his house. Elmo dismissed Ed's statement and did not believe him. Hmm. So he admitted it the next day, which kind of also goes back to that, like, he's developmentally young. Yes. He had either Uh, guilt, either guilt and felt the need to confess and tell someone, or he just didn't have insight into not telling somebody. Some, one of the two. Because at this point, he's killed many people. So um, something about that stood out for him. Hmm. Okay, so moving forward, 1957, he's 51 years old now. Like, time's going by. The sheriff and deputy warden entered Ed Gaines' house. Through the shed, Bernice Warden's headless corpse was found hanging upside down with her ankles lashed to a wooden crossbeam. She was split open from vagina to sternum, feel dressed like a deer, in addition, the police found human skulls affixed to the Ed's bedposts, a box of organs, and furniture made out of bone and skin and masks. The masks were the skin portions of the head that had been stripped away from the skull and uh, actually well preserved. Also found was a belt with the breasts hanging from it and an entire suit made of pieced together skin of women, completed with a vest with breasts attached. Do we have any interviews with him where he explains uh-uh. his actions? I I looked hard. Um, I, I just couldn't lo- find an actual. Really, be interested to hear. I think part of the what, problem why he was doing this. I think because he was in the the at the time the insane asylum, um, the mental institution for his entire time. I think that's part of the, he wasn't like publicly accessible. Like he might have been at a jail or a prison. Okay. Okay. But I did look and I couldn't find anything. Um, Okay. Somebody has something. Let us know. Okay. So after remaining silent at first, Ed did confess to killing Mary Hogan and Bernice Warden earlier. An autopsy report revealed that Miss Warden died of a single gunshot wound to the back of the head. They searched a 195 acre farm, lasted over a week. They did lie detector tests that were released to the press. Ed was also responsible for the disappearance of um, at least three other people. Did they ever figure out what happened with the little girl? Did they ever find her? Uh, She wasn't listed now. So same year, 51 years old, Ed is taken before a judge, technically being charged with robbery because he went into the grocery store and shot her. Uh, okay. And they, I don't think the police really knew what to do with the parts going on in the house. <laughs> A little out of I scope, I think. <laughs> so that the charge was robbery. Um, the murder charge was held back because they wanted to look at the sanity plea. So psychologists and psychiatrists who interviewed Ed asserted he had schizophrenia and was, quote, a sexual psychopath. Graves that Ed supposedly robbed were opened, and the graves of Miss Adams was found empty. Mm-hmm. Deputies found more bones buried in trenches on his farm. One skull had a gold tooth that was believed to be the skull of a man. So possibly the those people who went missing. Ed complained of memory deficits during an interview with Dr. Sherbert at the Central State Hospital. He was interviewed by Schubert, and Schubert found that Ed had a, quote, abnormally magnificent attachment to his mother. Oh, magnificent. Abnormally magnificent attachment to his mother. And this is long after she's passed. The judge received a packet from Central State Hospital stating that Ed was insane and should be permanently committed to the hospital. Ed's sanity hearing uh, declared declared legally, sorry, Ed's sanity hearing declared legally insane. He was recommitted to the Central State Hospital indefinitely. Um, That was a year after he was put in. So... We jump forward, so that was in 1958. We jump forward to 1968, so 10 years later. He was in that institution. He was determined 
um, to stand trial and proceedings began. It took nine months to pass the preliminary matters, such as suppressing evidence, filing for briefs, appointments for counsel. The actual trial only lasted one week. Ed was found guilty of first-degree murder for the shooting of Bernice Warden, but the courts also found that on the day of the shooting that Ed was not sane. Therefore, the court concluded that Ed was not guilty by reason of insanity. Ed was returned to the Central State Hospital. So that was in 1968. 1974, Ed filed a petition. He wanted to show that his mental health had recovered and that he was fully competent. There's no reason why he should remain in a hospital. Where did he want to go? Prison? And I've read many reports where, especially back in this era, that uh, that institutions like this weren't good. Like <laughs> weren't, prison was better? Yeah, like at least prison, there's an end date. Mm. Potentially. <laughs> but it, there's... Um, yeah, I mean, what year was that? Being under experimental. That that was in 19... Well, he'd been in that institution since... Let me see here. So it was 10 years. So 1958. Oh, yeah. Those weren't good institution days. No. 1958 all the way up to 1974 is when he put mm. the petition in. So they um, looked at it, and it was rejected. Ed was moved to Men Mendota Mental Institute in Madison at age 72 now. Ed was very senile at that time. He had been dealing with cancer. He died of respiratory failure in a geriatric ward. He was considered by many to be a model patient, mild-mannered, always helpful. Hmm. And at 6 a.m., only four attendants, Ed was laid to rest next to his mother in the Plainfield Cemetery at age 78. So, the people that he killed, that was gunshot? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, the rifle was in the store. So, they were things that were accessible at the time. Okay. And, okay. So, I found um, these wonderful students also did, like, a profile on, like, yes, no, this type of murder type thing. Oh. So, one thing, his IQ was 106. Okay. Just to keep that in mind. Um, grades in school, average. And he had never been to a psychiatrist before committing his crime, so he had never seen anyone for mental health. Uh, Ed was suspected for the death of his brother, Henry. Uh, he had disagreed with Henry's feelings about their mother. He, he was having dinner over at a neighbor's house and was intrigued by one of their relatives. Later that night, a man broke into that woman's house, grabbed her small son by the throat, asking where his mother had gone. The boy thought he recognized the man as Ed, Ed Gain. Gain was also suspected in the disappearance of that of an eight-year-old girl we talked about and the 15-year-old girl, Evelyn, who disappeared. Um, Ed would have been 41 at the time of these disappearances and 47 at the time of uh, Hartley's disappearance. Hmm. So... It was never proven, but Ed was suspected um, in a few deaths in this local area prior to when things were getting mm -hmm. reported. Uh, there are seven victims. He confessed to, do, confessed to two, five suspected, um, only charged with one. Uh, victim type, most were middle-aged in their 40s who resembled his mom. He's got a type. Uh-huh. He Most of the killing occurred in his home. But um, even though, like, that one, I mean, I'm sure she died in the store with the gunshot wound, gunshot. you would guess. But, um, okay. And then they said that because of his him, like, having a drink with Mary Hogan before and being in the store, they considered that technically stalking, so that mm. he stalked the victim. Said he's actually very quick and efficient with how he did these things. Um, he did, um, they said that he had sex with the body, but I think he just masturbated with the body. I never saw that he actually did have sex. Um, he mutilated the body. He took tokens from the bodies. He um, was crafty. You got to yeah, give him that. He was, yes. Um, and, okay, so I'm going to show you the pictures that I have here. So that's the house. 
Okay, it's big. It is a very big house on 195 acres. Wow. And so this house actually looks very similar to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. They tried to replicate Am it. Am I going to have to watch that movie? Yeah. Okay. It's going to, you're going to be like, what the, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> now that you know the real story. Um, get out of here. Oh, did I do it wrong? Is that him? Yes. Hmm. Okay, so... There's a little bit of that French fried potatoes look, too. Yeah, those aren't the ones I wanted, though, so hold on. Let me... Okay, okay. So this is people looking in the house after he had been arrested. So just, like, townspeople looking from the outside in. Um, mm. In front of the house with the police outside. It's spooky. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of ads on your computer. It's this site. <laughs> Curses. Okay. And then, yeah, more people. Looky loos, we'll call them. Just I would probably women. do a drive by. I don't know if I'd get out of my car. I thought this was cool. This like portable crime lab van Ooh, that they that. have outside of his house. Um, a wreath he had inside hanging up. So remember that the his mom's rooms were boarded up in like pristine condition yes. right okay so this is the police beginning to look through his stuff he had musical equipment pretty dirty um main living area this is one of the spots that was kept off limits okay okay so what's what does that look like clean it looks clean yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. orderly pristine here's the rest of the house oh it looks like a hoarder house yep yeah, so the and this kitchen is where they found a lot of the body oh, parts. Oh, there was a kitchen. I couldn't even tell. Yeah. So that's where they found a lot of the body parts in the kitchen, other areas of the home. This is a chair that's human skin that was mm. used to make the seat of the chair. Oh. Yeah. Uh, this is a neighbor. First time walking into his house, you can kind of see his face of just like disbelief of like, what am I looking at? Um, they're investigating in the garage and the barn. That's them taking out the skin chair, Ugh. trying to get the evidence. They dug in the garage to look for more remains, move the vehicles to try to find. But you see the pickup truck. Oh, yes. Oh, it's like the a cool vintage Ford. Vintage Ford. That, I mean, it wouldn't have been vintage then. No, it would have been very relevant. This is his bedroom. Ooh. Pretty worse for wear. Yeah. He wasn't neat and tidy. He was not. Very dirty, very messy. Um, this is the auction. So when they were auctioning off his items in the house, it actually drew a lot of people oh my gosh. in. Look at all those people. That means his stuff is all over the place, all over right? the world. Like it's spread all over the place. Mm. I wonder how many things didn't get bagged as having human flesh, but have human flesh. They on actually them, right? do. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many things people are trying to sell on eBay right now. Right now. They boarded up his house um, during the trials and everything to try to keep people from messing with the evidence inside of the house. Yeah. And eh, there we go. This was after the fire. Remember I told you that the house caught on fire and burnt to nothing? That's oh, where I the forgot. house was. They yeah. That. yeah. That they don't really know who did they it. They don't know who did it. They said that one of the cleanup crews who was burning debris... However, again, there was no link between the two, like the debris burn pile and the house. There was no jump. It was probably somebody, a neighbor or somebody that lived in the city the that sheriff, just thought it was so evil that it just had to go. Yeah, and the sheriff's family member died. She was the one that was shot and hung up like a deer. And so he didn't investigate this at all. Hmm. So that is the part two Filled in the mm. gaps of Ed Game. Thank you. You're welcome. I feel like I know more. I still have a lot of questions. I mean, me too, but without him here, I don't think that's going to happen. So what do you think? Like, just us being arm, armchair investigators. <laughs> um, I mean, our chairs don't have arms, but... They don't. Armless chair investigators. Like, what are the things that led to those behaviors uh definitely having your junk grabbed in the tub <laughs> i don't think is great um i mean 
it sounds like mom took care of the family. So there was this, like she was the, the driving force, like she worked, dad was feared and really didn't do anything. So she kind of had this, I mean, I could see as a kid, like, yeah, you do what mom says. Mm -hmm. And And he was also abusive, the dad. Yes, he was physically abusive, and she was verbally abusive. Yeah, it doesn't seem like mom was loving, warm and loving. So no, 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 no parental support whatsoever. No, there's no. Doesn't sound like in the extended family, like a, a grandparent that was warm and loving. No, and I would no ass- friends. I would assume one thing that I didn't find much about, and probably for good reason, but like the closeness between the siblings. Mm-hmm. so like if they were really close because they both lived there for a long time mm-hmm. before the older oldest died he was gonna get out well yeah he was gonna he that didn't happen marry the divorcee mm-hmm. that was his ticket to freedom yeah and talking about about mom and i could at this point knowing what i know now i could see mom not being involved and ed feeling like he had to take care of it like he you can't talk about mom that way or like you can't leave us that sort Mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I could just see mom yelling like you're going to hell. (laughs) I think it was the situation created absolute dependence Mm -hmm. on mom, the isolation socially, geographically isolated a mile away from anybody and dad being ineffective, you know, you're, you're, you have to, I mean, even just to survive, you have to be Mm -hmm. attached to mom. Who's also scary as fuck Mm -hmm. grabbing your junk. Well, and because, I mean, my guess is that it's not like she, like you said, she wasn't emotionally close to the children. So as far as, you know, was he possibly torturing animals? Was he possibly doing some of those things? I mean, likely. Do you think she was sexually abusing him? (sighs) I mean, I mean, she grabbed his junk, so there are some There's obvious boundaries that were crossed at least once. Mm-hmm. And then the pig thing, though, it's like, what was that? Yeah, I mean, that would be a big, like, red flag sexual abuse. Like, something's, something's going off. on. Mm-hmm. And whether that's dad mm, or that be dad. because with dad's drinking and aggression, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, or it could be mom. It and so somehow, like sexual gratification and violence became twisted up in his head, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and maybe that was tied in with that. Um, you know, you'll you get affection in these situations, but nothing else. So mm-hmm. even though it feels not good, there's some unhealthy attachment forming. Bad attention is better than no attention at all. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. it makes. That line makes sense, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I'm curious about his mom. Like, where, what's your story, mom? Yeah. Like, where did you come from to ha- be, like, this religiously overzealous? Like, what? What happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah, there you go. I I know. I feel well-rounded in that I knowledge. I've been drinking now. this too fast. <laughs> I don't even really like it that much. It it it's like this weird like good at first, but then it turns gross. Yeah, I could kind of tell it was going to be like that. That's why I just like, like at stuck, first it's like mm, the strawberries, out. and then after it's like ooh mush- mushrooms. Is Mush- that what I'm <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> Jesse's clear. We know mushrooms aren't bad. No, mushrooms are great. I just don't always like to drink them. Your weird, creepy dead woman shoes. <laughs> It should not be all over the desk. I brought them here for you. Great. What size are they? I think they'd fit my feet. <laughs> what size are they? They're artifacts. I'm going to look at this artifact. All right. Oh, I- is this like... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they print shoe sizes in the Victorian era. Yeah, they they actually have like nails. Little nail taps. They tap in the sole with a nail. I think they're cute. If they weren't burnt up, I would try to fit in them. I feel like you could revive this. They're very skinny, though. Like my foot would not fit in that. I mean, it's I like two inches wide. Feet. Yeah. Do you think these are children's shoes? 
No, I think Victorian people were small and we're just like big gorillas now. You may say that. I have small feet. You're a big gorilla. I am a big gorilla. Whenever I go vintage shopping, I always like feel like enormous. <laughs> big gorilla shopping. Okay. Guess I'm ready. What I'm going to talk about. I'm so excited. I already forgot what you said was connected. So let's bring it on. Oh, yeah. No, genital grabbing. Well, it was How something right on that was I? said. Oh, like. My topic is not genital grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> like you evil man something. Something. You said a C word. I'm going to talk about curses. Oh. What did you say? You said something about a curse. That's when I grabbed her shoulder. Oh, I got it. Because she said, like, something curse. Something Something curse. Curse Curse you. Something. Um, Have you watched the brand new Cherry Flavor show yet? I told you. I watched it all the way before you. Oh, you watched it before me? Yeah, I watched it all. Oh, okay. Before you. So that was about a curse. Yes, it was. Um, let me start out, as I sometimes do, with a little Story. little interlude. Oh. A little educational interlude. I want to say something about the term gypsy. Mm-hmm. So this may p- be positively embraced by Romani people, but it also might be rejected by other Romani people as being offensive um, due to its being used as a racial slur by some people and you know it implies like illegality or just like being outside of society like maybe being involved in nefarious shenanigans hooligans yes but the british house of commons committee did a parliamentary inquiry in 2019 and interviewed Mm -hmm. um, members of Gypsy, Roma, and Traveler communities and asked them how they felt about that word and how they preferred to describe themselves. And while some found the term Gypsy to be offensive, others were proud to associate themselves with that term. Hmm. Um, And I just mentioned that because I'm going to be talking about um, well, I'm not going to be talking about this, but this is my second <laughs> intro. This is intro two okay. to my topic. I'm going to be talking about Jimmy Marks of the infamous Spokane, what's known as the Gypsy family of Spokane. Oh, yeah. Okay. And if you look up any articles, they say Gypsy family and, until like the last few years, and then they stop using that term. But mm-hmm. I was even looking at articles like five years ago, and they were still using that. Hmm. Okay. Um, and the family actually did call themselves at that time gypsies. So have you heard of Jimmy Marks of Spokane? Our no, town? no. In the summer of 1986, 18 police officers conducted a search on two of the homes of the Marks family who the police suspected were in possession of some stolen property. The search yielded over $1.6 million in cash and wow. 160000 in jewelry in the houses. And there's photos you can see of all the cash laid out, like on the floor and all the jewels laid out. Score. According to a New York Times article about this, police ripped gold-plated false fingernails from women's hands, removed earrings from a five-year-old girl, and even searched a baby's diapers. Ew. The family explained that they had all that money because they didn't trust banks so the family sued Mm -hmm. the city of spokane and the raid was determined to be unlawful and a violation of civil rights there had not been a search warrant oh so they just went into this house without any like reason to be doing that and any rights to be doing that so the marks family sued the city of spokane for 40 million dollars for the unlawful raid of their homes and eventually settled at $1.43 million at the end of the court case. However, the Marks family considered that amount an insult. Mm. When Grover Marks, the leader and patriarch, passed away in 1997, Jimmy Marks stopped the funeral procession in the middle of the street in front of City Hall, right downtown. Mm -hmm. He got out, he went around to the back of the hearse, and I watched the 
the video of this. There's like video on YouTube. He opened the back of the hearse. He ushered out his father's ghost into city hall. And what? yes, in front of everybody, what? just seeing everybody. No. And like telling everybody what's going on. He pushed the elevator button, ushered his father's ghost into the elevator. So it could go up into the building. And he said that his father's spirit would forever live in City Hall. And he said that it was part of a gypsy curse he had placed on the city. So until... Feel bad for his dad having to be in City Hall for the rest of his <laughs> remains. Well, his dad probably... I mean, his, his dad was one of the houses that got raided, so... Would have been fine with Yeah, it. he had been good with it. So until he died... Jimmy Marks would regularly attend city council meetings. Mm -hmm. And anytime something bad was happening with the city, he'd be like, the curse has worked well. So he was mm. like a pain in the ass till the day he died. I'm so going to say that now. And <laughs> the curse has worked well. Every time there every was, time. you know, a scandal in the city or a problem, he would um, say it was his, the curse that he put on the city, his gypsy curse. So Jimmy Marks died in 2007 from a heart attack. He was sitting in the dentist chair at the time. Weird. Unrelated to the topic, but I felt like I should mention it. Because of your fear of dentists? Yes. Okay. And we've talked about dental chairs before. I, <laughs> I see the loose association. It's very loose. <laughs> like teeth <laughs> being pulled. I have a dentist appointment on Monday, thanks. Oh, I need to go. I... I don't want to talk about it. That's another topic. <laughs> okay, so let's get into curses, hexes, sometimes they're called, crossing, sometimes they're called. Mm -hmm. So I follow um, YouTube channel Crescent City Conjure. Um, Sen Elias, he owns this conjure shop down in New Orleans and practices hoodoo and has all kinds of cool videos. So this is from his information. So in hoodoo, a hex might be performed for protection of oneself or one's family. Mm -hmm. For example, if somebody is like crossed a line and that could be a spiritual line or a physical line. So like revenge. If someone has wished negativity, so it could be on you or a loved one, mm -hmm. then you might consider a hex. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. If you've been doing positive work, you know, positive um, hoodoo work, and then you mix in negative work, you might cross yourself up. So mm. you have to be careful. Because when you do negative work, you will get your hands dirty physically and spiritually. And there is the threefold law. Have you heard of that? No. No. There's a consequence to positive and negative work. Whatever you do, your deeds are revisited upon you threefold. I've heard that comment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have threes. to consider the threefold law when considering a curse or hex okay. on somebody who has done you or a family member wrong or is, or is maybe crossing a line. So it mm -hmm. might not just be revenge. It might be their infringing on your circle of safety yeah i feel like i'm too trusting in my life because i was like who could i put a hex on and then i'm like i don't think anyone deserves that i feel like well, i need to make fine. some make some enemies put well, some hexes out be there for what you wish for threefold <laughs> threefold enemies if you're gonna do a curse it's a good idea to do a cleansing because you are the conduit that the curse travels through so if you're dirty you got a dirty conduit. Yeah, it's not going to work well. You're going to make some dirty hexes. So this will protect you from the shrapnel of negative workings. Because mm. you don't want... Dirty bits. Dirty bits yeah. hitting you. And you want to make sure the curse is justified. So in hoodoo practice, that means you're going to consult with your ancestors mm -hmm. and get guidance and insight. Okay. You also want to avoid hexing or cursing someone you live with. Or that you work side by side with. Is that because the energy is going to be around you? Because if you're in close quarters mm. with someone, what hits them will hit you too. It's like Corona. 
So if you're working in a bullpen and you hate your co-raker, you may not want to curse them because that might come around that cubicle wall and hit you. Yeah, those things aren't. It's going to come right over the top of that cubicle wall. It stops at like four four foot three. A lot of plexiglass. (laughs) That might help. Ooh, (laughs) plexiglass from COVID can be multi-use for hex protection cube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Protections and uncrossing work will help you with these negative consequences. So you may determine that you just, you have to do this, even though there's some risk to you. So you will have to put a lot of effort into performing protection work and then crossing mm-hmm. work. And you might also feel very energetically drained after performing a hex or more angry or emotionally volatile. Mm-hmm. So take these consequences into consideration when you're considering deciding I feel like you're like this if is the a how to hex guide is justified it yeah. is this is the how, how to, to hex how to hex or curse yes 101 <laughs> so that information was from sen elias who i'm a fan and sen elias if you're listening please be on our podcast because you're cool you gotta email them they're not listening to us damn it <laughs> so then i found this other website called learn religions not a great website name, but they had some what is it? Useful info. Learnreligions.com. Oh, okay. I could have come up with something better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a curse that results in unexpected and unwanted consequences was just performed badly. Mm, like like what should happen is what you want to happen. Gotcha. So like if you don't get the outcome you want, it's because you sucked at putting it together. It's your fault. You fucked up. Not enough plexiglass. Not nearly enough. There are a number of things that go wrong in cursing and hexing. Look at me stuck to your chair. Look at the back. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) That was ridiculous. (laughs) Is this made out of human skin? That chair? No. Hell no. Why is my skin sticking to the skin? Do you need another skin? beverage? Did you drink that? I'm almost. I'm almost done with mine, too. I drink it really. This gets... The strawberry juice, it like goes down easily. This this gets better as it goes. I thought it said drink worms, and I got concerned. Drink works. Oh, it says mule. Yes, it does say mule. Continue. Okay. So there's some things that can go wrong. So did you allow emotion to get in the way of working? Probably. Did the did uh, you word things in a way that allowed your plans to go awry? Like maybe you stated it wrong, what you wanted to happen? I mean, probably. Did you spend too much time dwelling on the hoped for results and Aww. worrying about what would happen? Fuck. Then you're not focused. Obviously, I did that. I would do that. Damn it. Did you, while casting, question whether or not the working would be effective or not? So that's that doubt. Yeah, like I doubt. doubt. You have all to have confidence. Mm-hmm. Confidence in your curse, I say. Okay. Some pagan traditions believe any sort of magic for personal gain is wrong, whether it's harmful to another person or not, and do not practice curses. Is there a point when white magic comes out of mind? What's white magic? Uh, Ibuprofen? Dark, because there's like black magic and white magic. Well, black magic is like summoning demons and stuff. Yeah. So, and I've heard white magic use like it's magic for the power like of Like healing good. and stuff. Ah. I think. I, I think. <laughs> I'm that, not that the kind expert of thing. to talk about this. I think that. I just threw out the thing I, I remembered once. Probably from a movie. So I think a hex. Whether it's considered positive or negative would depend on that individual's Mm -hmm. determination Mm -hmm. and their intent and what the situation is. Like that person has to decide. Yeah. If it's a positive or negative thing. Do you remember I talked about the Jamaican um uh like curses? The duppy. The the yeah. And then that but they had to do it exactly right. Like the planting the plant with the roots up or Mm -hmm. the what did they throw down on the ground? Oh, they just couldn't count <laughs> past 10. So throw a bunch of stuff on the ground. Yeah. 
and that would confuse them. Here's what I think. If I was considering a curse, it would have to be intensely 100% to protect someone I loved. Yeah. I it would think- not be because I hate that person. Like, that yeah. wouldn't be the the driving force behind it. I agree. I think it would it. be, like, how to keep someone safe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. I mean, unless I was really upset about something and I knew something would work. Well, stay <laughs> tuned because I'm going to tell you how to do a curse at the end of this. <laughs> I'm so excited. I drank all my thing, though. I had I had one time, oh, I think I talked to you about that before, where it was, like, what is, what is Wiccan like? Did I tell you about that? And, like, I, like, lit candles in the room and, like, uh, mm, read yeah. something on the internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't get very far. What were you trying to There's, do? There's, like, a lot of steps involved. Were you trying to do a curse? It wasn't a curse, no. Oh. Like no, a, I don't even remember what something. it was. I just remember there was, like, you had to get different sizes and colors of candles. You had to, like, gather, like, different, like, natural objects, like, twigs mm-hmm. and stuff so like i remember that stuff mm-hmm. and you know different herbs and mm-hmm. things yeah yeah have you been wondering if you've been hexed macy everything i do i do to myself <laughs> to determine if you've been hexed ask yourself three questions okay maybe maybe i have tell me I think we need a, a, more, right. a more alcohol, or I do anyway. You need a more alcohol. What do you want? I'll go grab. This is to... one of, I'll have oh, another wait, strawberry I'm mushroom. I'm stuck again. Delight. <laughs> a mushroom delight? Okay. Yeah. If you. You have to, you can't go into the top, like give some background info. Talk about your shoes. I don't know. No, I'll talk about something else. Don't worry about it. I can BS with the rest of them. We're not over two hours. We have an hour. Okay. Okay. Apparently, on Podbean, um, you get cut off at two hours, which is distressing when you're in the middle of a hot topic. So I have some other items on the table that Macy doesn't know about that I'm going to reveal. In addition to the burn shoes, I have some protection oil. And I have a protective stone, which is selenite. And these are really hard to find in a round shape. This isn't even totally round. It's like a sim- cylinder because they fracture so easily. So usually you find them in like stick-like shapes, which are not pleasing to me in a stone shape. Oh, she's coming. I have to hide it. Was this day fade broken? No. Oh, like you liked okay. that. I did? Yeah. It's not broken. Why, why is it well, broken? Well, that one time I came, they were gross. <laughs> No, you liked it. Okay, I don't know which. No, one you didn't like that spritzer thing. You okay. said it was rotten. Here's your cluster. Is that what it's called? It says cluster. Oh my god, it is called a cluster. <laughs> Why would I purchase a beverage called a cluster? It's oddly named. All right. Okay. I don't have to work tomorrow, so. I didn't realize, like, how, like, hot I was in here. I am wearing a sweater. No, I'm wearing a sweater, too, (laughs) and I'm really sweaty as well. (laughs) I opened your fridge, and I was like, this feels nice. I didn't, I thought summer was over, so I didn't (laughs) Me, too. We had that one cool morning, like, four days ago, (laughs) and it's been, like, 90 degrees in the day, and, like, I wore a hoodie for three of those days. No, I, I'm, like, fully in, like, Ow. fall attire. I didn't even think that we should turn the AC on. No, I but bought... I'm I bought, actually sweating right I bought now. fall boots. <laughs> I'm excited. I have fall boots on order. <laughs> Me too. They're not here yet, but they will be. I'm just going to wear these burnt-up Victorian no, I lovelies until it's like then. A, a big heel. That's really fucking my feet. Okay. All right. You ready to ask Teach yourself me. three questions? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, I'm back. This is how you can determine if you've been hexed. Oh, this is so much better. Oh, good. I won't ever buy that other thing again. Is there someone in your life that you have angered or offended in some way? (laughs) Wait, okay. Has there... I'm like, yes. Okay, has there ever... Ever is the word? No, now. Right now. that I've Or recently. That I've angered or offended. Mm -hmm. I definitely have. I have a knack for pissing people off. Is this off. two weeks? And I'm actually a, a really nice person. I mean, yeah, like probably, yeah. Okay. I think more so people. Yes. I think more people should be mad at me than they realize. <laughs> 
Is that person someone who has the magical knowledge to place a harmful spell on you? Fuck no. At one time in my life, yes. Really? I would I think I was hexed at one time. Is a hex or curse the only possible explanation for what is happening to you? I mean, other than just what your own psychological problems? You know, like you're creating the situation for yourself. Oh, I see. I see. Or okay. there's another explanation. I mean like you yeah. lost your job, but like you were doing bad at your job. <laughs> like you can't blame that on a hex. Yeah, no, I'm I'm back at the place of everything's my own. Doing. Or your car broke down, <laughs> but it's because your car is old and you don't maintain it. You know what I mean? Like you can't just assume it's a hex. No, I've literally done everything to myself. Okay. So I have two out of three for a past situation because I'm I know I offended or angered somebody. And I know they had the magical knowledge to <gasps> place a harmful spell is it, on do me. Do I know? Is it? Do I know this person? No, you don't know. But you know the world uh, from which they come. I, I, that's the world I was thinking of, actually, yeah. but probably a different person. But nothing happened, so I think the hex didn't work. Okay. Even though I know one was put your direction put in my direction. Oh yes. gosh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> So Oof. if you answer all three as yes, then it's possible you've been cursed. And that's if that's the case, you need to take protective measures. So you want to hear how to protect yourself from a curse? Yeah. Yeah, because this could be happening right now and we don't know it. There could be people right now that we have angered or offended in some way. If do you do this often, because like I'm finding it really hard to be like, oh, someone I offend. Like maybe I'm just like a really neutral person. Um, I usually know that I've angered, offended somebody if I avoid seeing that person. <laughs> See, I don't really have. Which to. I don't have anybody right now, but there was times. Yeah, when times I was in the past involved in another activity. Well, honestly, the one person I'm thinking I know of people for me, hated me. One that one person I'm thinking for me is because of you, <laughs> <laughs> and I think she'd have the means from her own spiritualness to do some oh, things yeah, to me absolutely. for sure so maybe think back like did some bad things happen to you at that time i mean i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> as a young me i don't usually mean to offend like it's usually unintentional yeah you're kind of that like you'll say something or present a certain way and you have no idea about it and then i have to tell you about it later <laughs> 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 you're like what? <laughs> the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. Okay, so here's some ways you can protect yourself from a curse, which I need to study up. because It's our Taurusness, in all fairness, that pushes us away from people because we're just better. <laughs> That's the thing <laughs> that might offend people. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can create a magic mirror spell. Which bounces Ooh. the hex or curse back to its sender. Oh, that's so great. I like that it's like, you know, a a nice try. <laughs> yeah. So you can just do a single mirror or mm. you can even do a mirror box. Okay. Where you put a representation of the person that's trying to curse you in this mirrored box. And so mm. every way they send it, it just goes back to them. Oh. <gasps> It's like every frustrating movie when they go in and shoot all the mirrors, but it's just a mirror. Like at the fun house scenes. Yeah. <laughs> you can create a doll or poppet to take damage in your place. So this Ooh. is big in the world of hoodoo. As I was like saying, having these representations. I have a damn it doll. Of you or other people. If I put my, if I cut a strand of my hair and sew it into my damn it doll. Do you think that would allow things to ricochet to the damn it doll instead? Yes, but you have to be careful with that because that if that's a representation of you, whatever you have to make sure it's it's encapsulated in a way that won't come back yes, to me. Yes, <gasps> so that's it's literally a voodoo doll. So yes, it would that's very tricky. You got to oh, there's be like careful. A, there's an art to this that I'm no, not, there's a very art. You I'm can't not an just expert. forget about your Macy poppet. And leave it in the back of your car. Cause... I shouldn't leave it on the counseling desk where <laughs> other counselors have access. To no. It. No. Okay. <laughs> Not a voodoo doll. Voodoo is different than hoodoo. I have to say that. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so you have to tell your poppet who they are. So I have made you and your name is blank. Could you make those boots? Does it have to be a doll? Could it be an object? Um, it can be a representation of you or mm -hmm. another person. Hmm. So whatever that looks like. I mean, like that human type figures are popular just because it's very easy obvious. to recognize. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want it obvious because then someone's going to grab it and realize it's me. Sorry. Hey, sweaty. I feel like I, it's summer again. It's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a, like a full on knitted I, sweater. I you too. are too. We're both wearing sweaters. <laughs> I literally get like, I'm restuck on your chair again. Ooh, my like, hair is like... <laughs> all sweaty on my back of my neck. Um, I just have to ask you, sure. it's really not relevant to anything but my feelings. <laughs> Where's your pet rock? Um, I have it. <laughs> you want me to get it? I do. Oh my God. Used to, I watched it sit there for a very long time and I looked over and it was gone and I emotionally okay, was that means sad. You have, you have to, That's my representation of myself is that pet you rock. Have to, uh, entertain people. <laughs> I'm I'm talking. I'm good. No, I, I think I saw you, it like a few days ago. This is like a Tomago Tamagotchi all over again. You can't forget it, or it will die. <laughs> oh, First of all, Naomi can't take care of house plants, let alone understand the full importance of a pet rock. It's really Here important. It Aww. I told you. Look how cute it is. You know how hard it I. I love that. I, this was a good rock. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't have rocks drawer. like this anywhere. Like this was this was found. It's important. Pet rock. Take care of it. That is me. There it is. I'm that rock. Oh my gosh. That's... <laughs> Extra pressure now. Is that the Macy Poppet? <laughs> yeah. It's the best I can come up with. If you get angry, you can throw me through a window. <laughs> I was always what in Derby the Enforcer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Throw me at someone. The closer. Um, you can do like workings that remove negative influences in your life. You can do healing, mm -hmm. different rituals. Um, for general protection, you can use a simple shielding method, and so this draws a psychic shell around yourself mm -hmm. that protects you, and this can be either doing a circle of protection that gets recharged periodically, or you can have like a protective amulet or talisman. Hmm. Like remember you brought back from Europe for me, that little like eye thing. Yeah. 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 The evil eye. So in Judaism and other like Middle Eastern areas, you have the Hamsa that mm -hmm. also protects you mm -hmm. from the evil eye, which it's like a hand with an eye in, yeah, in the middle. Yeah, that concept. Of, and, and yeah, I remember hearing about that while I was there, that it was like if people are putting evil intentions towards you, it's it protects you. It's the evil eye. Like, yeah. yeah that wasn't good. it. That was I hate to tell eye. you that the first, I'm going to admit this publicly, the first time I heard about the evil eye was on the Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Was somebody putting an somebody evil eye on said, someone else? Someone said that they were going to put the curse of the evil eye on them and like did this weird eye thing. And yeah, and that was Ooh. the first time I heard about it. <laughs> and, okay. and, then, and then I went to Greece and then that's why I bought that. <laughs> I have it sitting in my sunroom. Dude, I bought like six of them for people I care about. I was like, if this is... <laughs> no, I feel like <laughs> I want to house surround wives. the house. I want these evil Hang bitches. them from all the eaves outside and I'll be that person <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> like, I have oh. one on my lamp still. It's worked so far, I think, honestly. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can protect your property and vehicles as well by creating this barrier of protection mm -hmm. around your yard. You can even set up something at your desk at work mm -hmm. if there's something going on with coworkers. There's always someone. Yes. So... I have some protection oil. What? That I ordered from what? Crescent City Conjure. So if what? you'd like to use some to protect so yourself. Crescent City Conjure. Go ahead. I'm scared. No, it protects you. 
But like, is that there? But you said things come in threes and like, be aware of like ripple effects. I don't want to put it on me and have like some, like if all my, sh- like? if all my shit goes downhill from here, like I'm blaming this, but this will give you threefold protection, but you have to think of unintended consequences. It smells great. But no, but that's what I, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what? why you have to really think about it. <laughs> what are those? What are those intended, unintended consequences? So I need to know before I. Put- I think if you protect yourself, an unintended consequence could be maybe uh, people can't access you because they're too protected. <laughs> that was a lot of silence I'm on sorry, a podcast. I was, <laughs> I was really letting that digest. Um, I mean, I what? just thought of that, so but, I don't know. Okay. Like, if you're too protected, you know. I'm thinking from a therapist's point of view, like... Like, if I have too many walls trust up. Trust versus distance, yeah. Yeah, okay, but and that may be a bad thing for me, because I tend to be pretty walled up anyways, and not very open. But are you letting too much in, maybe in certain areas that need protection? Maybe you could focus it, just in certain areas. You know what? I don't give a damn. Let's give it a shot. Do it. <laughs> I think it smells. If good. bad things happen, I can blame you anyways. I'll put my. I, I got my. Smells like safety. <laughs> it does smell like safety. <laughs> safety and like. And out. You can put it on the bottom of your shoes. I feel like some man's wrist smells like this. Put it on the bottom of your feet. What? Well, you can put it on the bottom of your shoes and then you carry it everywhere you go outside. Wait. Okay. So you want me to put this on my feet? Just put it wherever. I feel like that changed things. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Wait. <laughs> Why on the bottom of my feet? Because then I carry it everywhere? Is that like a thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. But you can put it wherever. Just put a little. And you'll be protected. Okay. And the downsides might be that I. <laughs> are too protected. That like. You that, know, like, there's two sides to every coin. That like maybe sometimes I'm too trusting, and that this will protect me a little bit more from my from that. But the danger would be maybe too much boundaries. <laughs> I mean, I have is it in there, my room. Is, is there, I have used it, and I'm okay. I'm, I'm gonna put it on one foot. <laughs> okay, half protected. I, I literally just put this. I also have <laughs> carried later, this later on. I'm gonna be like. Does smell? Why does my foot smell? <laughs> I carry this stone with me all the time. Oh, here, is... put the lid on this so I don't spill it. Did you use some? I put it on my foot. Okay, one foot. One foot. I um, and it's look at the pretty color too. It is very pretty. That way, like, because both feet, I feel like might be too much. I need my sensibilities about me. Okay, well, see, so you're using your insight and wisdom. This is selenite. It's okay. pr- protective, also. Can I touch it? Yes. I've been searching and searching for a round one. I had a round one and Mm -hmm. it fell and broke. Mm. They usually come in sticks and I don't like a stick stone. No, this is very appealing though. Mm -hmm. I really like it. We had our crystals episode. So I have this on my desk like all the time. And if I'm in a meeting and I'm like worried about my emotional safety, <laughs> then I, I hold the stone. I had a moment, um, s- quick side tangent where, so in like most major life changes, I have, my dad gave me a necklace that he's had forever when he was in high school and it's a yang and a yang oh. metal necklace. And I lose it for large quantities of my life. And then whenever a major change happens, I find it, which is really interesting. That's so, so cool. So when I got my divorce, like I was like pulling out of the driveway and I found it in the driveway and like half of it was like scuffed up and I picked it up. See, I don't think that was had a coincidence. It. And, but the thing is too, is that recently um, I f- was moving things around in my basement and I found it again and I had lost it again for that whole period of time until, until like a few days ago. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. So that yin and yang symbol, I mean, that's just what we're talking about. Yeah. Like, even the good, you know, the white side has that seed of bad. Yeah. You know, I darkness actually, and light exist together. I messaged my dad and said, every time I find this, it's in a big transition of my life. I'm going to try not to lose it this time. 
and I haven't put it on a chain yet. <laughs> so we'll see, but I know exactly where it's at. So I think it means like you have to really look at both sides, unattended consequences. I mean, I'm very careful of like, be careful of what you wish for. Because mm-hmm. even if it seems like you're wishing for something good, like there could be those. Yeah. There could the be The unintended downside. consequences to yeah. something, even though you th- that you think is like a good thing you're wishing for. Yeah. 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 So I just like stop my thoughts. Nope. Not going there. Um, so there, you can add magical herbs to your protection. There's lots of ones. Basil wars, wards off negative magic. That's really cool. But I also really like Jesse's clears, um, just straight up alcohol tinctures as well. Well, they balance my, that. <laughs> they balance me as well. This protects me. Those bitters were great. Yes. Yes. Um, so lots of things, you know, herbs and things, herbs mugwort, St. John's wort, wormwood, yarrow, all of these are protective. See, I think that's where I started getting stuck when I was in, you know, my young in age looking at this. Cause it was like listing off all these things that I'd have to like, you have to put buy. some effort into it. And like, you could find them. I remember like searching, like oh, I went to like Fred Meyer at one point and, but like, they're fairly expensive for a young in to mm-hmm. purchase a, a thing of for no reason. Yeah. So I, that's why I want to go to that Crescent city conjure. Cause they sell stuff like your equipment to your herbs, your things mm-hmm. that you need to make your, um, you know, your workings. Your workings. I don't think they have that at Fred Meyer. I don't think they have a witch section, <laughs> <laughs> but they should. But a lot of these are like they have like that natural herbal medicine store. No, I mean basil. You can get cayenne, coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what dragon's blood resin is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sounds like the era of those shoes. Mugwort sounds like something from Harry Potter. Definitely matches those shoes. <laughs> There's a book that but comes I, with that. But yarrow, I think, grows just like, right in the fields around here. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think you start small. Maybe you start with some basil and coffee and you go from there. Sounds like and dinner. And you have to store it in like a cool container. Yeah. I like think you have to have that special cupboard that you open up. You're <laughs> like, hmm, going to do some stuff. I'm going to do some stuff. So then you have your magical crystals and gemstones. You mm-hmm. did crystal healing at that mm-hmm. time. So lots of them have protective pack- factors. Um, amethyst, amber, black onyx, hematite, malachite, obsidian, quartz, ruby, and selenite. So how do you break a curse? So a lot of those protective methods can also be used to break curses. So if you're like, I am cursed. And have you ever, like, just had that, like, string of bad luck where you're like, what is going on? Like, another thing, another thing? Like, I honestly have My car breaks down and my furnace goes out and I'm then this and Do then that then weird, this. Sus- I'm going to knock on wood because I, I, I knock on wood and that's my superstition thing. I do. Um, I haven't had any like big string of bad events because i know exactly what you're talking about and i know someone who just recently had it where it's like their tire blew up but they're like had a death in the family and it was like three things in a yeah, week you can't even get it's back like, up gosh you're, you yeah. get, you're down and you get knocked down what yeah you get up. i have to say so i do knock on wood anytime i talk about i'm um, not breaking a bone because I've never broken See, a bone in my so body. So that is something you're doing to protect yourself. I've never been stung by a bee. <laughs> what? You've never been stung by a bee? No. Even with your country roots? <laughs> you have this really <laughs> swayed perception of what my country roots No, means. I picture you wearing overalls. Have I milked a goat? Yes. Running around. But I don't like the assumptions you make of me as a farmer girl. I have never milked a goat. I have never touched a goat's teeth. Have you trimmed its feet? No, I've never have you helped touched a goat's feet. Castrate it with rubber bands. No. Okay, I've done those things. I have never been involved in a goat's bits. I've helped birth goats. You're more of a farmer than you think. I was there when a horse gave birth. Yeah, never know. Like almost trampled. Why don't you just own your farmerness? Because like farming, I view like agriculture. I didn't agriculture. I didn't 
You didn't grow anything. I didn't grow hay. <laughs> but like, I think animals are I went a to, form of agriculture. I went to 4-H. And... I think one of the H's is, is animals. Is it? <laughs> yes. I um... Horses, hens. Yeah. Hay. I did really bad in and ho- horses other in 4-H and excelled in the go barn. But that's just natural <laughs> ability that it's hard to replicate. <laughs> I can't come up with the fourth H. <laughs> Four H's. Um, I came up with horses, hens, and hay. Horticulture. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Mm. It's like I know it. It's like you were in 4-H. I was. Oh, my God. See? <laughs> Ow. I wasn't a good 4 H'er. If you were actually I just had, in 4 I just had good goats and I knew how to memorize anatomy. You cannot deny <laughs> <laughs> that you... I wore the little outfits. Do you want to see one day my outfit of me yes. in my horse attire showing horses? Can you wear it to the podcast? I'll bring my ribbons from my goats. Okay, perfect. I'm not going to wear it. Are you kidding me? I won't fit in that. Well, we can try. We can dream. <laughs> Nothing like putting children in a hundred plus degree heat with no <laughs> ventilation or air conditioning. I mean, for while hours. you were doing that, I mean, I wasn't doing anything like that. But when I was like younger, <laughs> I was in the science fair. You're in the science fair. Yes. See, I didn't view it like my older sister showed pigs, and I remember being like, "That's she- what my ex husband did." The shoats, because he's German. Oh, yeah, and that was like Sweet. pretty intense for me. Like, I don't want to whack a pig with a cane; like, that feels invasive. Yeah, I had a. There was a lot of chaos at fair. Fairs were like chaos for my family, and there was like family rivalries within the 4-H that were pretty intense. Wow, my horse bit somebody who was in the barn. Like, bit a chunk out of her back. Like Ooh. it was bad. My little sister got bucked around the whole entire and then like drug around the whole entire arena. And poor CC on Smokey f- Joe just ch- couldn't get out of a trot. Maybe a <laughs> future topic would be the trials and tribulations it's of not 4-H. trials, but it was trauma. <laughs> it the trials was, and trauma. The traumas of 4 H on Badger Mountain. You know how they say like bad luck comes in threes? I wonder yeah. if that's related to that threefold rule. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Because I've had things where I'm like, okay, that's the last thing. That was the third. Phew, things will get better from here. And it, and it, it always does. does. It does. Yeah. It really does. And it's like, gosh, this really and this really? Oh, well, it can't get worse than this. Like, And then it doesn't. But if you've only had two things, then it will. Well, that was, that was three. <laughs> that was three. <laughs> But then yeah. I'm like, well, is it because I don't think anything bad will happen that I'm manifesting goodness? I mean, it's often because I didn't take my car in to get it serviced properly or didn't change the tires or I didn't wake up on time or... Here's where I'm at, though. If you're having a, a run of these bad things, it wouldn't help. It would hurt to, like, focus on some positivity and bring positive yeah. in your life. Yeah. Because... What you tend to see from people just in life at that point when they get frustrated and they're angry because all these bad things are happening is they get more angry and they get bitter and resentful and and it just spirals versus, okay, let's take this in a positive direction. Like stop that Mm -hmm. cycle. Mm -hmm. But that's hard. It's hard. So I could see the allure of having something, an assistance. It's a physical practice. It's not just me like, oh, I need to think positively. No, I'm putting action into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that would feel very purposeful. Yeah. It gives. And it gives you a sense of control over your situation. Mm, You just made me think about like after there's like a loss, like a grief and loss thing. Like one of the steps that they recommend you do is like put put it into action somehow so always pivot to action yeah i say that all the time always pivot to action pivot to action pivot to action so you want to put a curse on somebody sure i do i'll find someone i don't really have like an idea yet would you like to hurt learn would i like to hurt someone <laughs> would you like to hurt somebody deeply <laughs> Um, actually like not really would you like to put a cur- know how to put a curse on someone from wikihow.com <laughs> <laughs> I would love to 
I can I can it be someone you don't know personally? Um, or do you have to? Does it have to be from your life? Now this feels like Volk versus Tarasov. Yeah, it's getting a little legality. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you don't have to answer my questions. I'm, just, I'm not. I'm just two drinks in, and them. it's just coming out. So the reason I am presenting how to put a curse on someone from WikiHow is because it was actually surprisingly difficult to find some solid curse instructions out on the interwebs. <laughs> you know, so I think I remembered after Derby, I said I would love to have my body x-rayed after I die to see how many fractures and stuff mm, that I probably broken. I thought that too. That I probably have had over the yeah, lifetime. And just just ignored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially with me claiming throughout my whole life, never broken a bone. Like I'd love to, to see an x-ray when I die. Um, but I can't. You're probably like I'm, a crackle cause paint. Because I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, my toes, give me a break. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> give me a break, literally. So, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I forgot how this related. There was a point, but it went away. Okay. Preparing the curse. Okay. Be aware of the possible outcomes. We talked about that. Yes. There could be negative consequences. You really got to Think forward with it. All right, it's on my foot now, so <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> foot forward. Um, studies have shown that people who believe they're cursed and feel helpless against it may suffer. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say that <laughs> word. Is that a word? Does... Is low, need help. <laughs> is low pressure also called diastolic flaccidity? Like a Fla like a flaccid bean? Flaccidity? <laughs> diastolic sounds right. <laughs> Did you say flaccid? Yeah. Flaccidity? Flaccidity? <laughs> flaccidity? I've never just heard that term flaccid related to anything blood pressure. but a penis i mean but, it yeah. makes sense because blood pressure in a penis which can lead to death okay what this is what <laughs> i was I... gonna say lead to <laughs> not getting an erection but no this is the non-peen related oh okay. oh can you say the whole phrase again slowly diastolic flaccidity which can cause a rapid drop in blood pressure and can lead to death so this is people who believe they're cursed. This can happen. Mm -hmm. So you can actually die from thinking you're cursed. Which then would be attributed to the curse. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, know that it could come back to you. Step two. Mm -hmm. I like WikiHow because it's always like step one, step two. Step one, a picture. step two. Yeah. 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 So... Uh, a common Wiccan concept also abides by this reap what you sow mentality. It says whatever you do, it can be positive or ne negative, and it will come back to you threefold. So that's that rule of three. Mm -hmm. I had that conversation with someone recently about co uh, COVID, just that like, Yes, you may have a comorbidity, but <laughs> but if you have COVID and it kills you, then yes, COVID is what killed you. It wasn't the you know, high blood pressure or whatever. Like, no, COVID killed you because you have high blood pressure. But, like, so this would still be the curse killed you because of blah, blah, blah. Because you had flaccid, flaccidity. Yeah, if you have your flaccid penis. Blood pressure. No, this isn't peen related. No? <laughs> I mean, maybe it is. I, don't I mean, know. okay. I'm so, not a doctor. So if you have low blood pressure, right? Yes, yeah, so it could kill you apparently well you need pressure in your bloods so if you don't have blood if you don't have that that's just you know a comorbid comor wow i can say that comorbidity better sober comorbidity of the curse but the curse is what killed you first a good rhyme the curse killed you first thanks <laughs> you know i'm allergic to morphine and you told me that. I feel like you're. Pressure, feel like you're telling me, me. Feel like you're telling me that for a future situation that's gonna happen. Well, they'll try to give me morphine. You'll have I, to put a stop to it. I know, and I'm gonna forget. <laughs> Can you write it on my hand? I've gotten it, and I almost died. So <laughs> Shit. it's bad. 
I'll you write it can't on your hand. have morphine. But then if I write it on your hand. Our fans love you. They will remember. They? No, they do. Or are they cursing me right now? No, they love you more than me. I will repel that hex. I no, will send it back to you with no, a mirror. No, I just said they love you. Okay. Accept it. <sighs> Sorry, it's hard to accept love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right about now, it's like an hour 35. This is the point where we I'm, get off track because I'm at the last part. <laughs> I'm telling people how to curse because if they we're want to. Enjoying talking to each other. And I would love to learn how to curse them. And this is how we're like, how did we talk for two and a half hours? How did two hours? I only talking? prepared 30 minutes of a presentation. I don't know about, I mean, mine was like 20 minutes. It was fine. That's why <laughs> it's nice to go first because you get interrupted. Go on. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there there could also be like guilt you feel because you curse somebody and you might and like if that actually works. And we saw that in brand new cherry flavor. Oh yeah. Like she tried to take it back. She's like, enough. Like, oh this my god. This is not what I, I asked for. I don't want to see the stuff coming through his eyes. And like... she's like, You wanted his life to be on fire or whatever, but then it like affected the kid. Oh spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> don't listen well, to us. Well, if you haven't watched it by now, then you yeah. deserve it. And don't listen to us anymore. <laughs> no, listen kidding. to us. No, listen to us. Or, listen to us. Or you'll only be at step two and you won't know how to curse somebody. And watch new cherry oh, flavor. This would probably be a good time to put a legal disclaimer. Yes. This is for entertainment. Entertainment. <laughs> entertainment this purposes isn't a good time only. to do this that's when you do it at the beginning it's literally posted in our podcast if book. you curse somebody and <laughs> we're you not... don't like the results that's on you we're not telling you to curse people no and this good, is not good educational or, or medical advice good or bad outcomes regardless all you have to do to feel better about life is get a pet rock it's a grounding stone. You can find one anywhere. Name it. You take care of it. Um, step three. I was like, why did they put this in here? Consider forgiving and move on. <laughs> Whatever. That's like, so that's like when I write an email <laughs> to a coworker that I put an out in of like, hey, you may not want to do this anymore. Here's like your out statement. If you don't want to <laughs> do this, here's your shot. Just say, yeah, this is actually more than I wanted to handle. Like, just just walk away at this point is what they're saying. Like, if you don't want it, if you don't want to handle that responsibility, walk away and no one's going to blame you. I think for me, if I'm considering hexing somebody, I've already considered forgiving them and that's not an option. Have you, though? Like, I'm not going to just you? let it go. Have you already forgiven them? No, I would consider it. Which means you haven't. I have not forgiven them, no. Okay. They have encroached on my territory, meaning they are inflicting well, something on a loved one. Pet rocks are really good as guard animals, too. If you throw them aggressively at someone, no, I've they been will training. protect you. I've been training that rock I'm glad. as a guard rock. Good. Uh, you have to clearly set your intention. Really think about what you want to have happen. I thought I said don't get too focused on what happens. No, I know. This is why I do research on multiple sources. So you decide, listener. No, because that's literally like the catch-all. <laughs> like I'm going to get fucked if I overthink it. <laughs> but don't think, but think about it. But don't think about it. I think it. you think about it ahead of time. But then once you're in it, you don't So like overthink you don't. About it. Okay, and you don't want to get too Because then you're committed and you have to be in the moment. You have to be uh, present. Mm. Protect yourself before putting a curse on anyone. So that's all that protection stuff that mm -hmm. you want to do. Because you don't want the curse to bounce back to you. So you need to be in a really good place. Get rid of that negativity in your own conduit. So that shrapnel does not hit you. But I kind of feel like the bitter, angry person is like the perfect example of how that's going to come back to you. I, th I don't think you want to do a curse when you're in an emotional place. Okay. So, and, and maybe that goes back you to You want to like be in your upstairs brain. Family protection. Like I'm doing this for a purpose. Yes. This is not emotion. Reactive, driven. irrational rage. Mm-hmm. 
because you have to like go gather yarrow and shit. Like, I feel you have to be yeah. focused. You have I to feel protected. Be able to shop having the self protection oil on my left foot. I'm glad. Watch something terrible is going to happen to your right side. <laughs> Fuck! Don't say that. Because <laughs> you're half protected. <laughs> Give it to me now. <laughs> you need, I'm all about like. Uh, I see this is full. I see you haven't done this, and I am your guinea pig. I needed it. I needed it for one specific purpose, and I used it for that specific purpose. And Did I you? We'll tell you it worked. So there Did you go. It. Yep. All right. It is on both of my feet now. There you go. All right. So this is a, a <laughs> jar curse. So this is like canning. You're canning your curse. Oh, don't get botulism. <laughs> I know. Gosh. Tasteless, odorless. Um, so you get your glass jar. A large, wide pickle jar is oh. excellent. So, I mean, this is like canning. You're canning a curse. <laughs> canning um, a curse. So this is a pop it in a jar technique. So mm -hmm. you get your pop it. So this is a doll that preferably like has a, some kind of resemblance to the person you're trying to curse that target mm. but it could be also a photograph of them or some of their hair or even like if you can't manage that like a piece of paper with their name on it mm. oh that's like death note for my anime friends oh i, I don't know the reference Death, death Note, all he needed was the name of the person in order to write it down in the Death Notebook. Oh. And they would then die. Oh, my God. Japanese. Remember the, like, red ink concept? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's almost uh, Yom Kippur for Jews. So mm. it's like the opposite. We have the Book of Life. Ah, yeah. So yeah. you want to be ascribed in the Book of Life for another year. Uh, so you have to like apologize. This was like for being an to, asshole for the last year. You had to know their name and write it down. If you didn't know their name, then you couldn't. I think there's a power in writing somebody's name down mm -hmm. and that's, writing things down. That's in the general. same because I think was that Korea that did the red pen. Like just, if, if yeah, your name Korea, is if Korea, your name is written down in red, then that could mean death. Um, and anime death note, which is quite wonderful. Hmm. Go on. So do that mm -hmm. um put it in your jar in writing and then you can you need some objects to use as mediums so this is a substance through which you'll transmit your bad energy through your curse through and so here's some examples rusty nails mm -hmm. red pepper flakes vinegar which may be used to sour the life in a, of an individual. So this oh. is a canning curse. Did, I told you about that um, tampon mischief thing where we soak the oh tampons in vinegar and put it under the car. Everything is so connected. It's, <laughs> it's vinegar, amazing. Vinegar does sour life. <laughs> it does. You can put some poisonous plants in. Mm, haven't done that. Um, urine. Mm, no you know like your urine it's like a pee in a jar <laughs> that'll help you gain domination over your target which makes sense because like, you're pissing on them yeah i'm gonna pee on you yeah i'm peeing on you look at you it's my space covered with my pee mm -hmm. um you don't want to use urine and blood that are not yours i mean that makes sense honestly like because they are biohazards <laughs> yeah i mean this, this is wiki thing weirdly has some like like has some safety weird warnings. like yeah. you don't you don't know about bloodborne pathogens use your ppe yeah <laughs> mask gloves graveyard wear... soil link to your topic oh uh -huh. yeah that's gross this can be used to drive someone away or drive mm. two people apart mm. Gr soil from a fresh grave is most potent potent but taking it might be considered wrong illegal oh and illegal yeah so another like uh warning from this wiki how 
Yeah, like some things you can do at home and like no one's going to really care. <laughs> I have so many animals buried in my backyard. So I think any like soil my from yard. my backyard is grave soil. Yeah, no, that's my, my dad's property. There's some, there's a plethora. <laughs> yeah, like you don't dig more than six inches out there because you don't know what you're going to hit. Because we didn't bury it deep enough. You have, like, Things have risen the up, The animal sure. cemetery. Pet no, cemetery. one day we're going to go out there and just be like, there's my dog, there's my cat, there's my yeah. rat. No, 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 no. <laughs> Leg, tail. Your arm isn't in the, There we go. Get it in there. Okay. <laughs> it's hard because I'm on the... We have opposite video, so it's hard to yeah. coordinate. Uh, so you, you put it all in your jar, mm-hmm. right? Remind yourself of your intention. Mm-hmm. Uh, add the medium to the jar. So say you're doing a rusty nail. Maybe you want to poke that in your poppet's head. Jeez. Um, seal the jar tightly. Make sure after it's closed, you don't open it. Mm-mm, don't do it. Do not. Don't do it. So you seal it with wax. Oh. Preferably from a black or red candle. Because oh. very specific. Black and red, you know. Okay. Um, to make it extra powerful, you can use a pin or other sharp point to carve your target's name into the candle before melting it. So then you're putting extra connection to your target. Then you shake the jar. Um, this is what I do every morning when I make my like health shake. I shake it up. So you want to shake it while continuing to think angry thoughts about your target. So Macy's right. Like this totally contradicts like that other website that said you don't want to be overly emotional during the process because that could mess it up and you'll have unexpected or unwanted consequences I guess this is why you don't learn how to do a curse from WikiHow. Um, so, yeah, you shake it up. Then you hide the jar in a dark place. This is just like canning. You can hide the jar at your own house, but hiding it somewhere close to your target will be even more effective. Hmm. So you could bury the jar in your target's yard. But make sure nobody sees you and that it's deep enough that no one can find it. That's difficult. I would be worried about getting caught doing that. And hide it so you can find it. But because you might change your mind and you want might want to break the curse. Another reason to hide the jar is that if someone finds it and breaks it, the evil intentions of your curse might come back to you. Shit. No. Then you have to be patient. Your curse could take days or even months to f- take effect. So in brand new cherry favorite flavor, she got him patient. Remember? Yeah. She's yeah. like, She's why like, isn't this working? I mm-hmm. want my movie back. And then it just got worse and worse. And, and then worse. she's like, yeah. well, I need some of his pubes. <laughs> and so she got those. Yeah. Um, so it's possible that the curse affected someone close to your target instead of them themselves. Oh, that would suck. I wouldn't I want that at all. So that's some of those consequences you really have to think through and make sure. Because they're around that person picking up the energies. Yep, the shrapnel. Mm-hmm. The negative shrapnels. So mm-hmm. uh, oh, it gives other alternatives to you have, the curse. You have... Like 10 minutes. Well, this is my last thing. Okay. And look at me scrolling because I don't like this last section. It's (laughs) all about like other ways to curse somebody besides a curse. Well, but we're looking at curses. So I know. I just want to know about a sage. Oh, there's a Q and a, a community Q and a. That's fun. (laughs) Um, How can I protect myself from black magic? Mm -hmm. Sage burn sage in your home and around your person. Brew sage tea and conduct your own protection spell. I have to tell you, I did that with a client once. <laughs> so, because I did, um, it was when I was at PSR. So we did like skill building type things. Mm-hmm. And she was adamantly religion and 
areas like this. And she was very convinced that a lot of her mental health symptoms came from that. And she mm-hmm. actually had a shaman come out to her house, assess it. And they said that they needed to burn sage. So I came over it, commonplace. We'd go to her house to do the, the sessions, um, not counseling. And, um, and at one point she was like, I want to burn this age through the house. And so I, I made her, we talk through of how this would benefit her mental health, mm-hmm. how it would make her feel more secure um, and any possible downsides. And then we just walked around and saged her house. What a perfect example of being culturally um, competent and as a mental health therapist. Thank you. Sure. How do I know if the curse is working? Well, you could observe their body language and behavior to look for signs of anger, sadness, frustration, or distress. You could also directly ask them how they're doing to see if they mention anything bad. I think that'd be very obvious. I'd be Mm -hmm. like, so how are you doing? Anything bad happened to you lately? How's things going? Yeah. Relationship shit? How's your your right foot? (laughs) (laughs) You get run over by a car? (laughs) Actually, no, because I put it on the other foot too. Take that. Yeah, so that's a really curses. interesting. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think I can think of anyone who had want a curse. Um, I'm too afraid of, afraid of what would come back to me. The whiplashy effect. I would just feel like bad. Like I always feel like I don't know everyone's well, and that's a story. consequence. Yeah, like and that guilt. Like that's what you have to mm-hmm. consider as part of the consequences. Yeah, not feeling right about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Pet rock. Yeah, that'll protect you. Rocky. Because you can throw it at someone. I'm going to call it Rocky. Rocky. (laughs) So I think that's it. Done? You ready to wrap it up? Let's Let's do this. Let's wind her up. All right. Until next time. Be careful what you wish for. What do you got? I don't know. Damn it, you snapped and pointed at me with I such know, authority. I'm so like excited for yours. And that was pretty good. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. I'm going I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> what are you gonna say? <laughs> Tell us. Preach. Preach. Okay. I will say that you what what was yours? Be careful what you wish for. Because a good wish could turn into bad results. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And be careful what you... <laughs> no, that's exactly what you said. <laughs> And until next time. <laughs> and until next time. Oh, my God. I'm having, like, a really hard time with this. Until next time. Did I hobble you? Hobble me? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Never Did mind. Did you curse me? No, I would. Did re- you curse me while I was in the bathroom? <laughs> I've been reading way too much Stephen King lately. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Misery. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, no. Okay, so until next time, don't get too attached to your mom. Ooh, good one. It took me a while, but I got there. <laughs> Bye. Bye.